Hi again, everyone. Welcome to theme four, vaccine and therapeutics development. This is the final theme of the conference. Our first speaker is Dr. Sanjay Singh from India. He is the CEO of Genova Biopharmaceuticals Limited. Take it away, Dr. Singh. First, I would like to thank Mark Manipur for inviting me to talk on such a relevant topic of vaccine development and therapeutics. We as a global community is going through this pandemic caused by the novel coronavirus. Having said that, I am confident that the scientific excellence of human race will win this battle against the virus as we have succeeded through many similar challenging situations in the past. Yes, Genoa is involved in the development of vaccine against coronavirus, but today I am going to talk about Genoa's effort along with its scientific collaborators towards development of vaccine against dysmaniasis, a neglected infectious disease endemic to India and other tropical areas. Next slide. I have divided my talk into the six small segments just for the sake of clarity. The first one is the disease and its epidemiology. Current vaccine land escape against the Lesmania. Our efforts towards development of live and attenuated vaccine as a proof of concept. Product development from a proof of concept stage. Summary of the work accomplished to date and future plans with the live attenuated vaccine. Next slide. So the first part of my talk is what is Lesmaniasis disease and its epidemiology. Next slide. In principle, the life cycle of Lesmania can be divided into three hosts, human, sand fly and canine. Primarily this disease is transmitted by a sand fly and parasite reside in the host in two different forms promestigot and amestigot, where well, metacyclic stage of the promestigot is the infectious form of the disease. These two terms are important for dysmania, promestigots and amestigots. It will keep coming during my talk. Sandfly takes a blood meal and inject the promestigot in the skin of human host or canine. Promestigots are phagocytized by macrophages and multiply inside the macrophage and transform into amestigot form, which is the disease form of the parasite. Sandfly takes the blood meal and ingests macrophages containing amestigates. These amestigate transform and multiply into promestigot and infect the host again when sandfly takes blood meal. This is basically how the parasite grow among its host and a carrier. Next slide. As per World Health Organization data sheet, the disease is present in two forms. First is cutaneous dysmaniasis and second is visceral dysmaniasis. Somehow their patterns are very close but certainly is still different geographically worldwide. Today this disease affects close to 350 million people in 88 countries globally and rapid spread of poor populations associated with malnutrition, population displacement and a weak immune system. As per latest estimate, close to 700,000 to a million new cases appears every year globally and this disease is responsible for more than 20 to 30,000 deaths annually. Next slide. The first picture of young kids suffering from visceralist meniasis where you can see the spleen enlargement which is the first sign of the disease. In the second picture is the cutaneous dysmaniasis, which causes skin lesions can be seen on infected patients. 
Next slide. The next part of my presentation based on the vaccine landscape of this disease. Next slide. So, is any scientific uh, information is available in the literature which suggests the possibility of a Lismania vaccine? If we go into detail to understand the disease eradication, yes, in a short time, pharmaceutical treatment against an infectious disease has a limited effect to reduce the mortality and morbidity against the disease. But long-term use of these pharma products create a drug resistance and a drug resistant parasite emerges again and again. Same is happening in Tasmaniasis also. Vaccine is the only possibility where a successful vaccine cannot only reduce the mortality and morbidity against the disease, but also allows option of eradicating the disease. Recently, we have seen polio has been almost eradicated from the Africa too. The vaccine is a feasible option against lesbianiasis is based on two important facts. First, as acquired immunity develops upon the resolution of natural infection of lesbianiasis. Second, in the past it has been demonstrated that Interdermal inoculation of low doses of the parasite induces long-term immunity for both cutaneous and visceral lesbianiasis. As reported, more than 5,000 people have gone through this process in Israel and more than 2 million people have been immunized in Iran. But in recent years, this practice has been stopped due to non-healing lessons and especially the quality of the product which has been used for this purpose. Though in the past different strategies to develop a vaccine against lesbianiasis like kill parasite, recombinant antigen, DNA technology based candidates have not able to produce the desired outcome and as a result as of today, there is no licensed human vaccine against lesbianiasis is available. So what the proof of concept we have for the vaccine development against lesbianiasis? Next slide. Our collaborators at USFDA through whole genome analysis and sequential knockout experiments reached to the conclusion that a specific gene known as centrine, if you knock out its short selective arrest at the amastigote stage of the parasite, but not promastigote. And as I have explained earlier, amastigote stage is the stage of the parasite which creates the clinical manifestation of disease in the host. Immunization of live attenuated Lismania donovani centrin knockout parasites generate protective immune response against the visceral Lismani Lismaniasis. And this work we published in PLOS Neglected Tropical Disease in 2016. Further, we have used CRISPR Cas9 genome editing technology to create centrin knockout parasite where no marker is left and this parasite can be used to develop the product which can go to the human. And now Merck owns the rights for this technology worldwide and this is also a very apt place where we can demonstrate about what we are doing in this area. Recently we have published the uh, next part of this work using uh, CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology parasite where we have coined a term second generation lesbianization vaccine. And this has been recently published in Nature Communication in July 2020. Next slide. 
First, we have demonstrated the efficacy of Sentin knockout Lismania donovani parasite vaccine candidate using a sand fly challenge model in the hamster in terms of mortality, weight loss, and parasite load. Very clearly, you can see that in case of immunized hamster, there is no splenomegaly after parasite challenge, which is specific to the vessel and asses. Next slide. In case of cutaneous dysmeniasis, we use Sentry knockout L major parasite vaccine candidate followed by sand fly challenge mouse model, where you can see in case of immunized animals, there is no skin lesion, a typical outcome of cutaneous dysmeniasis, and a significant reduction in parasite load as compared to control group. Next slide. We have moved from lab research to the product development phase, and the few next slides will show you our progress. Next slide. We have successfully grown the Lesmania Sentry knockout parasite in the bioreactor starting from a cell bank, where we can achieve the parasite density close to 50 million cells per ml. This was a long and arduous journey, but our industrial might in the area of cell culture and artificial intelligence driven manufacturing processes help us overcome technical challenges and reach this very important milestone of a large scale contribution of this knockout parasite. Next slide. We have consistently produced GLP grade material which have shown similar efficacy as compared to lab produced material in terms of protection and functional immune responses. As you can see, there is the expression of interferon gamma and TNF alpha in the spleen of hamster following six week post immunization with either laboratory grade GLP grade material or material which we have produced through bioreactive. Parasite load in spleen and liver of the hamster either immunized with laboratory grade or with GLP grade parasite were similar post six month challenge with l -donomony. This work has been submitted for publication and the manuscript is currently under review. Next slide. Further, our collaborator in Tunisia at Institute of Pasture are testing the efficacy of GLP grade material in the canine subset. Next slide. In our efforts to take this vaccine candidate for human clinical trial, we made a specific effort in last couple of years to remove all animal origin component from the manufacturing processes. Here we demonstrate that we have been successfully removed the bovine origin hemin with US FDA approved human injectable grade panhematin without affecting significantly the growth of the parasite in the bioreactor as compared with the, when we were using the bovine source hemin. Next slide. However, our efforts to replace fetal bovine serum with human serum albumin as well as with human serum in the manufacturing process were not equally successful. Based on these results, we decided to go forward with TSC-BSC free fetal bovine serum for the use and we are in discussion with regulatory agencies. Under defined qualification guidance, successful removal of fetal bovine serum from the final product can be acceptable by the regulatory agencies. Next slide. We have successfully scaled the process to the 5 liter where the growth pattern and the parasite morphology were shows to the similar to the small scale culture. 
Next slide. We have tried out various formulations for the live attenuated vaccine candidate, a representative of which is shown here. The parasite in the defined formulation, which is free of all animal components, are stored in liquid nitrogen. To see the parasite viability of a storage in liquid nitrogen, once the frozen vaccine is thawed, the parasite growth is tested in regular cultivation media. We have achieved the successful growth of the parasite in the defined media. Next slide. So now we are in process of defining the critical quality attribute for the final formulation, which include first the PCR test to confirm the absence of central gene because of the high growth rate in the bioreactor. We just want to ensure that no appearance of central gene by genetic recombination or that particular portion of the genome is exactly the same from which we start from the cell bank. The second is the percentage of metacyclic promiscuous population and the third is their infectivity to the macrophages. There are many strategies, potentially there are other many criteria, but these are the first we have started with. Next. Based on the data which we have presented here and also publications which the group has um, published, we can conclude the following. Next slide. We have demonstrated the efficacy of sentinel knockout parasite in preventing sand fly transmitted cutaneous as well as visceral asminiasis in mice and hamster, which is the gold standard. Further, we have also demonstrated in immunodeficient hosts their failure to survive in the sand fly vector and inability to revert to virulence well after multiple animal passages. We have also shown that certain knockout parasite induces a protective immune response and parasite-specific T-cell memory as indicated by the production of TNF-alpha and interferon gamma, which shows that this protection is based on cellular mechanism. Further, we have established the GLP and GMP manufacturing of the live vaccinated vaccine candidate. So future plans for live attenuated Lesmania vaccine. Next. We are working on translating our success at 5 liter to 100 liter CGMP scale. We are also planning to start a clinical trial in endemic region of India and Bangladesh. This collaborative program was USFTA, Ohio State University, McGill University, John Hopkins University, NIH Institute of Past in Tunisia, and Nagasaki University, Japan are involved. And we have been funded through NIH, JHIT, and Wellcome Trust. Next. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Dr. Singh, for that great presentation.